So Maria's question was, how can I add a photo? That's how we can add a photo to our edit box area or the body of our website. But what if you wanted the footer to be in the background? Legitimate, right? That's where we have to dig in pretty deep, which does drive me a little crazy. Is it still not going? Yeah, it's still not going. And I see. Up there is, I just got it. It's I just, just had to be closer. Really slow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's the IT proximity rule. Okay. So how, though, do I change the area outside of the body? How do I change, like, the background? What if I want that photograph to be the background of my whole web page or my whole website? I'll need to go to manage site way down near the bottom. Remember we went to edit site layout to change the, um, our horizontal navigation? So if I go to manage site, I have all sorts of powerful options. So it's going to be really important to look at some of these. Right at the top, this is really handy if more than one person is working on a website. Recent site activity. It can also be really handy even if you're just doing it yourself. Because you have the ability to see what you screwed up. If you did, like me. Very handy. And I like that they link right to the page there. So it's a quick way if I need to go, oh, wait a minute. But did I, re did I really edit that more about us? I, I, I want to double check that. And this time can be handy if you're billing a client. So it literally keeps track of the time for you right there. Now we looked at pages. Diana was the one that told us that in here we can move things around. And also, How did get so we clicked on, we went to the cog, right. manage site. Oh. And then clicked on pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See it? Thank you. Yep. Attachments. If we did allow people to attach things to our web pages, this is where we could see all of the attachments for the whole website. So that can be handy if you don't if you've got a really complex site and you're not sure where things were embedded. Page templates I'm going to discourage you from using, but you're certainly welcome to explore those on your own. It might be handy. I have never used this file cabinet successfully. It seems to be problematic. These four things have not changed in many years. So I would argue if these standard templates were useful, there would be more of them now, not the same number. Just my thinking. The app scripts we're not getting into, but you could create scripts to add additional functionality to your website. That's way beyond the scope of ED113. I rarely do that for clients. Every once in a while, they might have a really specific request. Deleted items, incredibly important. So if you accidentally delete a page and you've done all that work, it should appear here and you should be able to reinstate it. It should keep track of all the things that you delete, which is handy. So this is really what, like your trash or your recycle bin. Good to know. Is that only for the your current activity if you quit like No, that sh that should be from the beginning of creating this site. It should always be there. It, I'm pretty sure it's a permanent cache. Okay. I don't even think there's a way to clear that cache. So pretty handy. Now under general to get back to that thing, remember I never put in my site description. I actually don't know what this site notice is. I should look into that as someone who teaches Google Sites frequently. That's not something that we tended to use in the early day of websites, so it's, it's not something that's in my toolbox. But site description, definitely. So this site contains all of the knowledge dumped into my brain in the years of web design. I should have my name, I should have keywords, I should have all sorts of great data there, but for our purposes, one sentence will do. So that was under general settings. 
I also have the option to show the site name at the top of pages. Remember I said we can go and disable that for each page? Well, this is where I can do it for the whole website. So if I want to make sure that none of those take up that valuable space, I can edit that here, and that's something that I, I don't generally remember. Mature content I don't think is going to be applicable to your ED113 projects unless you've made a change since last class. But landing page, very important. You may not want people to start on your homepage. A lot of people will have their website initially load the blog rather than the homepage. If the blog is where your most current information is, that might be a handy thing to do. In fact, in WordPress, you have the option to make either the blog or your static homepage be that entry page. And site storage is only important when you're nearing 100 megabytes because by default you're only allowed to have 100 megabytes in your website. Don't worry about that because for the most part you're going to be linking to content that's hosted on other servers like video and so that's not taking up any of that 100 megabytes. That 100 megabytes really almost exclusively is text uh, unless you're uploading images in which case you could burn through it pretty quickly. And we're not going to worry about search options and statistics because it's more important that we get to, I'm going to leave this page, I should have saved, it means I just lost my description, Dumb. but I want you to see sharing and permissions. It will give you the address to share this page. If you haven't published it yet, this is the only way anybody can see your website. It's not public. They can still see it while you're working on it if you give them this link. Be careful. By default, what is the sharing of your website? By default, it's public. I would argue that's a mistake. Generally, when, while you're working on it, you want to change it to anyone with the link. When I do this with students, if I do it through Google Apps for Education, by default, it will be on private. But they don't do that. No, so now they give you the option of anyone with the link or specific people, but also see where it says access? Mm -hmm. Usually, depending on what you choose, you should have the option to change that, which is weird. You don't have it, but we can do what are called page level permissions. So maybe what you want to do is just make your home page public initially. It has the information either about you or your project, but you might not want the rest of it to be live until you've had it proofed and approved. You might have graphics that you don't have rights to yet or that kind of thing. So really important. For now, I'm going to leave mine public in case anyone wants to see what I've done today. And then at the bottom, I have the option to invite people, and that's where I can say whether they can edit or not. How do you make it? Sure. So I went into, um, see where it says who has access? Yeah, how did you get there after saving? Um... Oh, let me go back to the beginning. So from the gear, we're under manage site, or you can go right to sharing and permissions. Okay. And then I can click change next to who has access. And what I don't like is that if I change it to anyone with the link, I have to scroll down. Let's see. So if we say anyone with the link, save. Then if I scroll down and invite the people who would have the link, that's where I specify whether they can edit just view or be the owner. I think, again, that's a mistake. That should be right where you're setting the access. Because since you're going to the top so often to save, yes, this is a case where you need to go to the bottom. Uh, I don't like it, and I don't like that there is no save option on this page. That's a design flaw. I'm not going to let anyone edit. So if I don't add any names, how do I save this now? 
Well, oh, no, it's it's, it's saving it's by set. yeah, it's saving it's by, default. by default. Yep, that's just okay. if you're sending from here. Okay. But but when it generates a link, in my mind, I would take that link, go to Gmail, send that link to someone. But what I'm missing is the ability to give them editing rights or just view or or whatever else. So I'm going to hit cancel because I don't actually want to give editing rights to anybody. Web address is just what we've we've already approved right at the beginning but I can change this. Something very important to know. If you register your own URL, remember I said we'd end with you having the option of registering your own URL. You can do what's called mapping. You can map it so that your URL is the address for your Google site. So instead of having the address sites.google.com slash site slash my title, it would just be derekgreen.com. But that's pretty complicated and it varies depending on who your web host is. There are good instructions online. Usually your web host will give you the option. They, they might even just have a push button where they literally say, okay, if you want to make use a Google site, give us the address and we'll do all the settings for you. It might be automated. Of the end result is you, eventually you're going to want your own URL on here. But for the purposes of ED113, you don't have to purchase a URL. It's perfectly legitimate to just have a Google site. That's even more than some students are going to do. So finally, after all of that, <laughs> all the way at the bottom, talk about a company that doesn't value design. You have to go through all those options before you get to the place where you can change the font or you can change the color of the page, or you can put in a background image. So oh. It's so strange. But remember all that you can do before you get into here. And so what I might argue is, what I like about it, now I'm, I'm a designer and I want full control of my pages, but I like that you can create a basic website with all of your content before you even think about design. It can be very handy, especially for the purposes of this class, to really concentrate on your content and then gradually add design. Because you're using a content management tool, which is what Google Sites is, you can change the design afterwards. So that really helps. You have the real sense that the content is separate from the style. The same thing with, with WordPress, where you can change the style anytime that you want, the template. But yes, now you have to come into here, and it's not intuitive where to find specific colors. 